It's Sunday, February 16th here at the West End Gun Club. It's right at 1300 hours. I came in to the range this afternoon on the tail end of the precision bolt rifle match that they have here uh, in the morning to the afternoon. They just ended and I was just throwing some stuff in the Connex container while they had it open, um, some cinder blocks. And then, um, but I came out this morning to the rimfire range mainly to test out some stands I made. Uh, I brought two of them with me, I have four of them made. Um, but I'll show them in detail later when we get the vlog going and start, start shooting. Um, but I came out to test these. I brought out my CZ to kind of mess around with the zero stop a little bit more because I don't think I have a, uh, the zero stop reconfigured after I found it was kind of off. And then I brought a Ruger Mark II with me. It's a pistol, 22 pistol, and I just put a hollow sun on it to, uh, so I can have a red dot on there. So I'm gonna get that zeroed in today. Um, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and scarf down a couple of In-N-Out burgers because I haven't eaten lunch yet. And then uh, after I get through these, uh, we'll start shooting. For those of you who have seen past vlog episodes, specifically our NRL 22 matches or whenever I come, in, I come out here to shoot on the rimfire range and I use the JC Steel uh, target stands, I, uh, you, you're well aware that the way our range is designed that sometimes you can't see the targets if they're hammered into the ground. Like sometimes the uh, bottom hanger on a, on a double hanger, you can't see the, uh, the hanging target because there's another burn before that blocking it, especially when you're in the prone position because of the way we shoot at an elevated angle. And so I had a, came up with just a quick stilt method of propping the stands up where I get two, um, two aluminum pipes or whatever and just cut them down and then basically hammer those into the ground and then put this inside those pipes. And so they're kind of stilts off the ground. And those work well enough, but it take, it's a pain because you still have to hammer those into the ground. And sometimes if the ground is hard or if it's too soft, this target stand will still move and eventually it might fall over. And so you still have to fix the what's in the ground. So uh, on Facebook in the NRL 22, I think the members group and the advisors group, the Facebook groups, they had um, this wood design that I copied off another guy. Um, I was thinking about doing this anyway with wood, but then I saw how he did it with just basically uh, an H, uh, an H configuration, such as this. And then um, I've heard the cinder block method, which is what a lot of people also use. So I got some cinder blocks from Lowe's. Um, but basically, the premise is the in the channel of the cinder block. Um, some of them are not ideal because you can't put it lengthwise. But what you can do is put it diagonally like this. So as you can see, it's in a diagonal angle. But basically it's good enough to hold it and it'll it'll move side to side that's not a big deal um after it's shot it's going to be stable enough for for shooting um basically the premise is you don't want it to fall over and you still want it high off the ground so as you can see here compared to the ground if i'd hammered this to the ground if you think of the table as uh, the surface of the ground you're bringing up the uh you're bringing up the target stand good uh six to eight inches so um you get some good elevation there but Given this cinder block method is one way, I decided to try out just pieces of four x four and two x four, and I came up with this design. And I think this keeps it off the ground, not as tall as this, because I drilled the holes into the four, four x four a little bit deeper, but I think this is still about an inch lower, and we'll see if this works. And my concern is though, if this will move on the ground when you impact the steel, it shouldn't with 22 the impact of a 22 round and the amount of force, it shouldn't be moving this around, so, but we'll see. And I kind of drilled a hole for these, uh, for these uh, marker flags that I got off Lowe's. I got six different colors, so what I was planning to do for the next match is marking all the targets um, for a specific stage with a specific color. Hopefully you're not colorblind. Um, if that's the case, I may have to put like indicators here like a letter like an a or a b c or maybe even just a line plus like a minus sign a plus sign a triangle a square just to to keep things even for people who are colorblind because that is an issue actually uh color blindness for some people um but so anyway my premise was to like put an individual color per per stage so that you can easily spot oh is that 100 yard the one for this one or is that 100 yard target the other stage and it'll make things easier for our shooters especially when you're trying to find the targets in the dirt it's just 
very difficult sometimes. And for the cases where I don't have, I'm not going to use a target stand where I'm going to hammer these things to the ground, I found that um, I didn't bring, I, yeah, I have gaffer's tape with me. I can just put gaffer's tape on this and it'll hold the, around this and it'll hold this flag for the duration. But anyway, we're going to try these out today and see how they work. Um, both the cinder block method and the, uh, the quasi wood stand method. Brought the CZ455 out again because I wanted to, uh, I don't think I really got my zero squared away on this thing. I don't know, it's been, it, uh, I can't remember what happened, but uh, it's not, the point of impact and point of aim is a little bit different from uh, what it used to be as far as my zero stop is concerned. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get things lined up. And I don't think I got it uh, well lined up last time. So um, we're gonna do that today. Got a paper target sitting out there. And we'll just use standard plus. I got a bunch of this laying around. Got the magneto, magneto speed hooked up. I think it's, uh, yeah, I lined everything up. We'll see if it's actually gonna read anything. I've always had issues with rim fire reading uh, velocities, muzzle velocities rather. Um, you probably saw a video where I was able to get the magneto or the labradar working. Uh, without a microphone but sometimes that acts up so it's even the magneto speed acts up unless you're shooting it i don't know you got to have it configured just right sensitivity just right for it to read so we're shooting some sk standard plus i don't remember last time i cleaned this thing just this parallax a little bit better sorry Sorry, I was reaching for the top from a parallax. Like, I think it was my collis. So funny. All right. So it is reading velocities. Cold bore shot of the day is a 1055. 1055. Second shot is 1026, amazingly slower. Ten sixty-two. Nine fifty-one. Wow, that thing's all over the place. Ten thirty-nine. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and try some SK rifle match, which I'm actually running out of. I should probably order some more. I have SK long range match and SK standard plus, but I'm out of SK rifle match. This is my last three boxes. I have a new lot of SK long range and out of the Voodoo, the 20 inch Bartling, it's averaging 1119. The first shot's a very uh, outlier, that's a cold bore, 1136, uh, 1119, that's a 20 shot aggregate. I should probably just shoot another string because that was kind of a warm up string. Maybe if I shoot 10 more rounds, the aggregate or the uh, 20 more rounds, the velocity will probably normalize. So I might just go ahead and do that off camera, but the uh, long range seems to be shooting hotter than previous lots. I think 1110 was sort of where this shot out of this gun, but long range does have more velocity than SK rifle match. I shot a second string SK long range out of the Voodoo off camera, and it's still averaging about the same, 1121. See that high spike 1141, got the min of 1105, SD of nine, uh, 990. Um, but this lot of ammo shooting almost supersonic out of this gun, 1121. Uh, I can't remember what supersonic is in feet per second. Uh, I thought it was 1127. I could be wrong. Anyway, uh, let's go take a quick look on paper. 
Here's the first group that I shot with the ZZ using SK Standard Plus, SK Standard Plus, SK Standard Plus. You're looking at almost, this is, uh, I have no idea what's going on here. Um, this is about almost an inch. This is about three quarters. That's about an inch. Um, then I shot some more of the CZ. I think this is SK Standard Plus and I went down to rifle match and I'm getting this up and down stringing. And then I think I shot rifle match here, then long range match to warm up and then long range match. This is a long range match and that's also a long range match. So it's shooting long range match about three quarters of it to a half an inch. I'd have to measure this. Um, but my CZ is shooting all over the place today. I don't think it likes that standard plus that I got uh, laying around. In the rifle match, I'm surprised it's not shooting that well. And I shot uh, four pasters with the Voodoo using the, the SK long range match that I got. And it's shooting uh, half inch groups roughly if not slightly less. I threw these last two rounds. Um, but this is pretty tight. These two grooves are pretty tight, well under half an inch. So my Voodoo shoots fine. I mean, it's just shooting like normal, but my CZ is just not shooting well. Maybe I need to clean it. I have no idea. I verified from position, the prone position, that I can see the bottom targets on the double hanger at 75. Uh, with both the cinder block and my wood stand or my wood base. I can see at certain portions of this berm that's before the 75 that it could still be problematic, assuming we use those, we put the targets in those areas, but I don't think we will. Um, but it's something to keep in mind. But I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of rounds on target uh, since I've got them out there. And I'm gonna move them over to the 80, and then I've got some targets of the 100, which I'll verify in a second. So right now I've, I've put a several targets or shots on these targets and it looks like the bases are not moving, which is good. That was the primary concern with using these wood bases just sitting on the ground, on the, on the dirt. Yeah, it looks good. Looks stable enough. Well, while I'm here, I think I will actually shoot on the 100 because I have the 100, uh, 100 yard target on a wood base set up. So let me go ahead and make sure that, let me go ahead and shoot on that to make sure that it's not moving under uh, impact. Based on the velocity, this is supposed to be uh, 1.62, but it said 0.69 for 75, but I still use 0.8. Traditionally, I, use one, I would use 1.8, but the ballistic calculator with the velocity is telling me to use 1.6. So we're going to do 1.6, but I'm anticipating this is going to be a low shot at 100. Um, but we'll see what the, beast, what the ballistic calculator is... Uh, given me here. So I got a two and a half, I think, two and a half and a one inch. So we'll go into, or two inch and a one inch, two inch and one inch, I think a two inch and a one inch. Oh, we're still on. I did 1.6. We're on a little low. Now we missed. So yeah, it's definitely low. So traditionally it was 1.8. So 1.8 is my normal dope for 100. Let's try 1.8. Yeah. Yeah, 1.8 is the way to go for this. Even though the velocity is 1120 for SK long range match. And I plugged in 1120 onto the uh, calculator. Um, the 1.6 is telling me is not right, so I'll stick to 
Funny thing is, I was shooting on the 100 yard 1 inch target with my CZ and I nailed it every time. And my CZ is the one that's performing the worst today. <laughs> so it makes you wonder, should I try to gamble on the 1 inch during the, during the match? I don't know. I don't know, I keep thinking about gambling on the 1 inch. Whether it's safe, just safer to shoot on the, on the 2 inch, which gets you 7 points per hit, as opposed to 1 inch, which gets you 10. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I did find out that at 80 though, the berm is still too tall to, and it covers the bottom target of the double hanger. So for this range facility, we got to keep that in mind that at, at, uh, at 80 on towards the middle of the range, you can't see the bottom target on a double hanger. So I don't know if I try to manufacture something special for that, for this part of the range to get those targets higher off the ground. Um, but it's something that I have to keep an eye on if we ever have to use a double hanger and shoot prone on the 80 on the middle of the range. Um, it's possible we can grade those, I don't know, we can grade that berm down a little bit, it's just too tall. I mean, about a foot, that could help us. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bust out the pistol before it starts, uh, sun starts setting a little bit here so I can get out of the range too. Um, didn't plan on being here that long, but I've been here for a few hours already, so. Let's get the pistol going. If you follow my Instagram at all, you know that I bought a Hollow Sun 507C for my Ruger Mark II. The problem that what just came about that I totally forgot with the Hollow Sun 507C is you need a special tool or a very, very small screwdriver to adjust the elevation, um, which I don't have, and uh, elevation and the windage. And so I'm trying to MacGyver some sort of, uh, some sort of way to move the sights over. Um, this little deal, this corner on the edge of my, uh, my keychain, I have this like bottle opener. I think it can do it. The rim of a rim fire case is too big. Um, I think this paper clip might be able to, yeah, that's gonna be too big. So I might just end up using this deal that I have on my keychain. I don't have a very, very small screwdriver for some reason in my kit. My multi-tool is in my Jeep, like my Leatherman, which does have something. Um, but yeah, that's the one thing I hate about the Hollow Sun 507 c It's an inexpensive sight. And it's, so far, it's been good on my Glock 19. Um, that's that little adjustment issue is just annoying. So, the fact that you need to make sure that you have some small screwdriver to, or there's the tool that comes with it in order to make the adjustments um, is an inconvenience. But we're gonna make the best of it while we're out here. I've got some big pasters, six-inch pasters, on a paper target. Um, six inch shooting seas, but I'm going to go ahead and just load up some CCI standard velocities. Um, I really don't know what my Mark II likes. I've never really tested ammo on this. I've had this gun for 15 years or so. Um, I just kind of bought it because I wanted the 22 pistol, but I never really shoot it. I think I shot it a lot when I first got it, but you know, I'm not really, I'm not really much of a pistol shooter. Um, as far as recreation, I just shoot the Glock just for defensive practice or whatever. But um, we'll just try to sight this thing in. I'm just using this as sort of a rest. Um, this is a Ruger Mark II. I've got the Volquartz and Grip on here, so it's kind of righty for righties only. It's got a thumb shelf on it. And uh, trying to find the sight here. Oh crap, I totally, f I need the instructions because it's got this auto brightness thing on. Crap. I totally forgot how to set this thing. I want the auto brightness off, but I know it's got auto brightness. Yeah, crap. So, just a little lesson, make sure you bring your instruction manual on your sights if you're not familiar with them. Safety's on. Should have brought a spiny scope, but well, that's loud. Uh, actually, I can still I can see on the shooting seats actually on target.
So let's go take a quick look because it looks like it's actually on target. Unfortunately, the brightness won't drop down. I want it to drop, but it won't. Oh, God. I kind of remember how to turn on the auto brightness. If I hold the pus, I think it might actually turn it off. Yeah. Okay, holding down the plus turns off auto brightness. Great. Oh. All right, let's go take a look at the target. 25 yards, took 10 shots. I think it started off low, then it started centering up up here. So I'm like right here as far as that. So I think the elevation's good. I'm going to shoot a bunch more rounds on this, and then um, maybe I'll bring it over right for sure. Um, but it looks like it's actually on. I didn't really have to do much to get it on at 25 came over right two clicks I think it's quarter minute adjustments um, with a one minute dot looks like I came over too much Yeah, I think come over one. One click was good enough and not two. Two put me on the opposite side of that, of the middle. Came over right two clicks, came back over one more click. So technically um, aggregate of one right. And it looks like I'm about centered in right here. A little bit higher. I guess it's just the barrel starting to heat up a little bit. I could probably drop down one. But based on what was happening here on the first target, I may leave it. If I do, I'll come down one click on the uh, elevation at 25. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty good. I'll load up a few more mags just to, to shoot it, and I might shoot it on those steel targets over here that we have already set up. Um, I don't know how big these plates are. This one's about a six inch maybe an eight inch, six inch. And this one's like maybe a two inch, two and a half, three inch for the uh, other one. So anyway, uh, Ruger Mark II and the Hollow Sun shooting pretty well. Came out to grab the target so I can start packing up. As you can see here, got the wood stand or the wood base alongside my cinder block. The wood stand or wood base is working pretty well. The only thing to note here is to, that the metal fragments from the bullets are actually embedding into this beam right here. So if someone were to pick this up with their bare hands, it's possible that a bullet, uh, the lead fragments, if it's sharp enough, could cut somebody. So it's important to let people know that if you're going to pick these things up, pick them up by the crossbars as opposed to the, the main beam. Just so you don't uh, cut yourself. And I like how I have this marker flag. I got the hole drilled for the marker flag so that if you, we can have these as uh, target indicators to make sure that, hey, for this stage of fire, you'll be shooting on the orange, on the orange targets. And uh, it does function as a semi-wind indicator too. Um, granted, these marker flags aren't designed for that, but... Depending on how the wind is blowing, it could give you an idea of how the wind is at this point in time. So uh, just use whatever little uh, little tricks you can get as far as wind indicators on the range. But anyway, I'm going to pull these targets out. Packed up, about to get out of here. I need to drop off a couple things in a condensed container because I actually needed to borrow my car the target stand I left in there. And then I took one cinder block out of there for the uh, purposes of testing. Um, today... Lot out here longer than I expected. Um, just casual shooting and then getting the Mark II zeroed in. Um, that pistol shoots pretty well with the CCI standard velocity. I shot some biathlon, I think, on there. Biathlon or no, match, uh, flat nose match, sorry. Flat nose, SK, SK flat nose match, and it was shooting differently on steel. I think it was um, lower than, so I think it was slower than standard velocity. At least the CCI standard velocity in that gun, but. 
Anyway, uh, got that zeroed in for the most part. Don't even know what ammo to shoot in the Ruger Mark II because I never bothered to test ammo on that. But if it shoots the SK uh, standard velocity well enough, that stuff is pretty cheap. I think you get it for 23 bucks a brick at Target Sports USA. So I'll just buy a bunch of that stuff because it's uh, pretty good. Anyway, that's it for today. Really not much going on short of um, just some casual rimfire shooting and testing. This is the 100th episode. I do remember that uh, the last episode was number 99. Not really, wasn't really trying to do anything special for the 100th episode. Um, but if you've been watching my vlogs in the past and you're, you stuck with me 200, through 100 episodes, I appreciate it. And if you just joined in, I hope you stick around. Um, like I said in episode one, I wasn't really sure what my goal was for these vlogs, right? It's more along the lines of me just documenting my shooting in general because now that I don't really compete technically, like NRL 22, I mean, that's sort of a match. That is, you know, comp competitive shooting. But for the most part, I've not been hardcore competitive shooting and therefore most of my shooting has been very casual. And it's just whatever, whatever I'm into at the moment. Um, for a while, I was just shooting some, a lot of pistol stuff, right? Just my Glocks all the time. And now I was shooting, you know, tactical AR, right? Just shooting drills all the time. And then I moved on to precision rifle for a little bit. And I was, uh, went back to shooting F class or sorry, went back to shooting at Camp Pendleton because they had the F class matches there. So that was a good opportunity for me to go back there and actually shoot at Pendleton because I stopped shooting there after I stopped shooting service rifle. And then um, precision rifle. And then I got into the precision rimfire stuff. And so it's just me sort of trying out various things and making something out of my range visits. Um, so I wanted to share my range, vis my range visits with everyone else so that me just going to the range, throwing down a bunch of, ra bunch of rounds down range for no purpose whatsoever, just like just throwing them down haphazardly and then leaving. It seems kind of, I don't know, it seems kind of pointless at sometimes you're just doing that. I know like a lot of people get, you know, have, they shoot for recreation, right? They're, them going out to the range and shooting is fun. And I agree that is fun for me, but at the same time, sometimes it just feels like, oh, I went to the range, didn't get anything out of it short of, you know, relieving whatever stress I may have or just, relaxing or whatever it just seems like yeah i could get more out of shooting than just going to the range you know popping off a few rounds and leaving that's being able to document my range visits share what i'm doing with other people so that they can kind of learn more about various aspects of shooting or just learn about shooting in general if they don't shoot at all i think that's a great great purpose for this vlog and so that's why i keep doing them so anyway that's it for my little closing statement for episode 100 uh i really need to get out of here so I can go home, uh, make some dinner and eat. But uh, that's kind of it. So thanks for watching. I appreciate you sticking around uh, for the vlog, the ending of the vlog. And um, next week will be the NRL 22 match. So if you're still interested in shooting that match, we got plenty of slots open for now. Um, it tends to fill up in the last week prior to the match. So go ahead and register on practicescore.com and I'll put the link to the registration form on the video description or in the video description for this vlog episode. I may or may not shoot tomorrow. I might go to Desert Marsman. I'm really debating on that because I'm not sure what the wind conditions are and if there's going to be a bunch of people out there for President's Day holiday. Um, that Monday is a holiday, so may or may not shoot. If I don't, then the next vlog will be definitely the NRL 22 match, uh, February 23rd. Anyway, thanks for watching the vlog. See you in the next one. Failure to feed.